Thanks for joining us today. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. We have a lot lined up for you today, so let's first get started with a look at the day's highlights. Financial institutions forecast Korea's GDP this year to drop to the low 2% range amid economic uncertainties both at home and abroad. Quirky, funny and creative emoticons are becoming more popular tools of communication these days on smartphone messaging apps and the love for them has added more life to the booming market. We begin with the news of trimmed growth outlook for the Korean economy. Various financial institutions are predicting Korea's GDP to fall to the low 2% range this year as the country struggles with falling exports amid global economic uncertainties. Our Kwon Soa has this report. An almost one percentage point drop in the country's economic growth compared to last year is what many financial institutions are forecasting for Korea's 2015 GDP. If that holds true, it could be the worst result since 2012 and possibly 2009 since the aftermath of the global financial crisis. Although the average outlook from 36 global institutions stands at 2.5 percent, major financial services companies such as Morgan Stanley and Moody's estimate that Korea's GDP growth will only reach 2.3 percent. Nomura Securities and IHS Economics forecast 2.2 percent growth and DKB 2.1. One of the biggest culprits behind Korea's slowing growth is sluggish exports, which have posted negative results for eight straight months this year. But in the latter half of the year, there are even more factors of concern. We saw a less than 2.5 percent growth in the first half of the year. When factoring in the MERS crisis, China's yuan depreciation and expectations of a U.S. interest rate hike, the second half of the year is expected to be less than the government's 3 percent range goal. In the longer run, domestic institutions have also downgraded a longer-term potential growth rate. LG Research Institute estimates Korea's GDP will grow by an average 1.7 percent between 2020 and 2030. As the world changes from a manufacturing to more service-focused economy, and with developing countries such as China advancing in terms of technology, it has become much more difficult to improve productivity. Also, Korea's aging population is expected to add to the country's problems, with the workforce forecast to start shrinking within the next two years. This is why experts stress the importance of digging up next-generation growth engines as soon as possible. Kwon Soa, Business Daily. The first round of negotiations on a free trade deal between Korea and six Central American countries has begun here in Seoul. Trade ministers from Korea, El Salvador, Panama, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua and Costa Rica had agreed to push for a comprehensive FTA back in June. Now, the Central American countries together make up the fifth largest market in Latin America. And trade volume between Korea and the six countries has nearly doubled over the past decade, totaling 5 billion U.S. dollars last year. Trade officials say if the deal is signed, Korea would be able to export more cars, auto parts and electronics while bringing in more coffee and fruit from the Central American nations. The talks are set to wrap up on Friday. Loans extended by Korean banks for lump sum chunza deposits have soared over the past five years amid a surge in rental prices. Figures indicate that loans for chunza offered by the six largest local banks totaled 15.8 billion U.S. dollars at the end of last month. This is a nine-fold increase from the end of 2010. Chunze prices have risen 40 percent in just four years, and the average lump sum deposit in Seoul now stands at over $300,000, accounting for roughly 70 percent of the property value, as more homeowners prefer monthly rentals due to low interest rates on bank deposits. Now, experts say demand for Chunze and a shortage of homes will likely push prices up even further.
We told you about the so-called Youth Hope Fund last week, which aims to foster employment opportunities for Korea's young job seekers. And starting today, the public can make donations to this fund through banks. During a meeting at the presidential office of Cheong Wade with her senior secretaries on Monday, President Park Geun-hye said she hopes that people from all walks of life will pitch in. She said leaders in political, business and religious circles have already expressed interest in the fund that will be put towards areas such as skills training, certification and overseas work opportunities. The Youth Employment Fund was launched last week, starting with the president pledging a monthly contribution of 20 percent of her salary on top of her initial donation of $17,000. Meanwhile, the employment rate of vocational high school graduates is on the rise. According to the Ministry of Education, employment figures of those graduating from specialized schools rose 2.4 percentage points to 46.6 percent as of April. More than 90 percent of graduates from industrial training Meister High Schools landed jobs, while the rate stood at around 48 percent for specialized high schools and only 23 percent for regular high schools. Since producing its first batch of graduates in 2013, Meister schools have maintained an employment rate of over 90 percent. The ministry attributed the rise in overall numbers to a growing culture of graduates seeking work straight out of these vocational schools. Korea's Thanksgiving holiday, Chuseok, is just around the corner and many people nationwide are loosening their purse strings to buy food or gift sets. But now the question is, when is the best time to go shopping to get the most out of your budget? Our Lee Ji Young might have the answer to that. This large supermarket is filled with people shopping for Chuseok Korea's Thanksgiving holiday. It's a major harvest festival in the country, and with only about a week to go, many people are starting to purchase gifts for friends and families and preparing for the many dishes that are served after the ancestral rites. First of all, I buy the dried goods or food that can be kept for a long time, then salt the fish and put it in the fridge. According to Korea Agrofisheries and Food Trade Corporation, Depending on when people shop for goods like vegetables, fruits and meat, prices can be 10 to 30 percent lower than original costs. If you want to get good prices, the best time to buy things would be roughly five days before the holiday, considering the freshness of goods and so you can avoid peak demand for gifts and ancestral rights. The state-run corporation said it predicts prices will not fluctuate much as the holiday nears, and the government has doubled the supply of most popular Chuseok items to stabilize prices and boost consumption. Lee Ju Young, Business Daily. Innovation seems to be the key to success for many businesses these days, which means companies must not only come up with new ideas, but they must also have a good patent strategy to protect their information assets. And our Won ji takes a look at one local firm that specializes in such patent services. Patent information contains the legal and technical data for new inventions. It tells you exactly how an invention works and who has the right to make, use, or sell the item that's protected by a patent. According to FuturePlay, a domestic venture for startups, it's also a powerful tool that could help businesses stay ahead of the competition. By providing custom-made patent strategy for different tech startups, FuturePlay has successfully incubated more than 20 startups in less than two years. The asset of information is universal, so patents are effective in countries all over the world. Therefore, utilizing patent information can quickly foster the commercial value of a startup while also protecting its intellectual property. Even the government is advising companies to use patent data to build strategy. Korea's state-run patent office says local firms should thoroughly research international patent laws before taking their business globally. It's extremely difficult to survive in the global market without a strong patent strategy. So it's important to stay aware of the major market trends and build momentum accordingly. Experts say securing strong patents and applying them for strategic purposes are the key factors to success in today's information age. Won ji Business Daily.
Smartphone emoticons, those cute graphic images used to express people's emotions on messenger apps, have grown over the years to create a huge market with a lot of profit and potential behind it. And to tell us more about this, our Kim Minji joins us in the studio today. Hello, Minji. Hi, Jian. So how often do you use these emoticons? Well, I have to say almost every day. And my sentences are just not over without an emoticon. Uh, that's not surprising because it's becoming more widespread. And in fact, it's all the rage when it comes to mobile messaging these days. Now, that's because um, you can convey your emotions, but also it's because it's simpler and faster than typing, and they can be used by people of all ages. And they also add some fun to the conversation, so they're becoming a huge source of profit for messaging applications. Let's take a look. Over 200 million. That's the number of emoticons shared every day among users of Korea's number one mobile messaging service, KakaoTalk. This means one person sends roughly 20 emoticons on average. In 2011, when KakaoTalk first launched, there were only six available sets. In just four years, that number has jumped 170-fold to reach over 1,000. More than 10 million sets of emoticons have been sold so far, and considering that each set costs roughly two U.S. dollars, that translates into sales of $20 million. From the simply cute to celebrity-based images, they've become more than enough to win over users. I like to use emoticons more than typing, so I regularly buy them. There are a lot of cute emoticons these days. I use them all the time during conversations with my friends. It's a fun way to express myself. There was once a time when emoticons were limited to smiley faces or frowns, using basic signs on the keyboard or their rare hearts. But now, from animated ones to those that come with sounds, they were worth a thousand words and can be used to convey emotions or just as fun graphics to liven up a dull conversation. Users even take part in event promotions, downloading game applications, just to get their hands on one more sticker. When we create a new character, it's based on our daily life, so it can easily blend in with people's everyday conversations. People are into unique and strange characters, like cute sheep that use bad language, so they can express their feelings in a witty way. But emoticons are now more than just a means of expression. The popularity has created a buzz off-screen with people's favorite characters being used for stationery, dolls and even food and makeup. This bustling character store in downtown Seoul sees an endless flood of shoppers from open till close. We've opened 36 stores until now. With around 5,000 visitors each day at our popular stores, total revenue reaches around $850,000 each month. As messaging applications increasingly become the main channel for mobile communication, experts say emoticons have great potential and there's room for continued expansion. But they do have a word of advice. With the exception of major characters, many others have a short lifespan. So independent designers or companies will have to continuously develop new characters. But with applications that allow you to make your own characters and a fairly low entry barrier into mobile messaging apps, new ideas still have great potential to lead to real profits. And if not that, at least they can breathe a little more life into people's chat rooms. All right, Minji, so I wasn't the only one who literally used emoticons like every single sentence that yeah. I messaged my friend. But um, I see that this is becoming a huge market now. Yes, and it's a market that it's expected to get bigger. Um, currently, the size of the global emoticon market is estimated roughly $430 million. Wow. And that doesn't take into account the offline market. And experts say so long as people use messaging apps, the emoticon craze will stay strong. Now, in Korea, the two main messaging apps have or are are planning to um, separate their emoticon divisions as separate operations to focus on just this business. A neighbor's line in particular said 20% of its profits last year, and that's roughly $75 million came from emoticons. Uh, so just the figures alone just show how much uh, profits that these emoticons are raking in. But then now I'm wondering, do the designers of these emoticons rake in any of the profits? Well, yes and no. For star designers, they're already doing other businesses mm. such as webtoons or cartoon magazines, and that's one example, but for up and coming designers, that's not the case. Now, messaging app companies are set to take about 30% of the revenue that they make. So it's quite hard for 
new designers to make a living. And one designer that I met said she has to take on another job to make ends meet. And the thing is, the entry barriers to this market are pretty low, so it makes competition stiffer. And in Japan, an eight-year-old gained attention for her octopus emoticons, showing how varied the creators are of these characters. Oh, wow, so we can expect to see more of these emoticons in the future. And I hear it's becoming a, more of a global trend now. Yes, this is because um, the craze started in Asia, but it's becoming more widespread. And this is because more companies are jumping into the emoticon market. And this is some of the things that they are saying. Um, uh, Facebook, which offers only free stickers right now, has said that they help share how you feel with others. And Line says emoticons speak more than just words. And Path says emoticons are expressive and fun and can convey what words cannot. All right, so more jumping into this competition, which means you and I have more stuff to pick from, right? That's right. Okay, thank you so much for coming in today, Minji. Thank you. All right, that wraps it up for today, but we'll be back tomorrow with more business news that matters to you. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.